yeah is it visible clearly sir yes now visible yeah yeah actually you might have seen all everybody might have seen though whom so far i joined i believe that uh, this centrifugation is very common as like this ph meter and every, all other instruments we have been taught from the sixth standard for sorting the things on the basis of the different properties of the matter so centrifugation is one of them which allow us to separate the molecule the matter the particle on the basis of a certain principle and every instrumentation has its own different techniques has its own different methodology principle and there are different industry who makes this centrifuge machine maybe remi appendorf and many more but the principle lying behind is same and even if you take the topmost which is made by backman quilter the principle is going to be same so there is no much advancement have been seen to be observed in centrifugations as it has been observed in microscopy as it has been observed in spectroscopy or in other field of the analytical techniques but this is the most basic one so let us start with that of the centrifugation so why do we use centrifugation as once we have a impure mixture or we say the mixture of a compound we need to separate them and in our daily lives the separations there are different types of separations like separation based on the size separation based on the color separation based on the like kapre ko hum log alag karte hain ya fir kisi ko bhi alag kare so there are different bases in biological science we need a pure compound to be obtained either we obtain the mixture from the natural process or resource or from the synthetic one so we need to purify them why we need to purify them because all we know that if we wish to take an example of uh, say a uh, drug molecule if it is impure what will happen because if the uh, paracetamol is been suppose taken by somebody else i someone else someone of us and if it is impure it will not give a perfect function as it could be and it will have some other effect as well together with the paracetamol and therefore the industry who makes it pharmaceutical industry who makes it is more over working on the purity the purity is 99.9% or something else so for make more pure and pure we use centrifugation as we have been taught or we have uh, or we might have studied in our bsc or we must be studying in bsc or msc whatever the courses we have in analytical technique suppose we need to isolate the dna what we do is first of all we crush the cells or we digest the cells by any means and then we centrifuge to remove the debris why to centrifuge them why not to use a strainer for the differentiation for the separation of the debris because the debris is so small that if you use that particular strainer to separate them it is a bit difficult and therefore the centrifugation is coming into the picture now the separation in on what basis so if you have the particle in a mixture to be separated and if you want separate them easily on the basis of the size you can pick them up by the hand if else you can use a strainer so that the filter will be filtering out on the basis of the size suppose the two particle has same shape and same size then what to do then what we do is then color suppose if all particles has the same size shape same size and same color then what to do and therefore it comes to more over the density of the particle so if the two particle which are similar in their mass shape 
size can be separated on the basis of the density and hence is called as centrifugation. So centrifugation technique is based upon the behavior of the particle in an applied centrifugal field on the basis moreover on to their density. If you talk about that, if the two particle has the same density, then what to do? You can go for the polarity. So if you use polarity, it will become chromatography. If you use other than that, if they do have charge, you can go for electrophoresis. So there are different techniques on the basis of that, we can separate the particle. Now the question comes that if suppose the particle does not have the mass, doesn't have the definite shape, doesn't have the size, the definitely will not have the density, then what to do? Then how to separate? Then we can say that it must be a genie. You have to have a kind of, you know, uh, dia, Gaso, Giso or Nikal Aiga. But in centrifugation, the particle must have size, shape, size, the mass, and the density, and then can be easily be separated. Now, what is the principle of separation? There are there is a little bit mathematics involved into it because it's a matter of physics. So wherever there is a physics, mathematics runs parallelly. And therefore, for a given particle. The rate Stop. of velocity, sorry, if any moment of time, if you feel that you can ask me, you can uh, uh, stop me there. So the particle can be separated on the basis of the rate of the velocity at which it is sedimented and which is directly proportional to the force applied through the centrifuge machine. So the particle will sediment more rapidly when you apply the force more over it. Not only that, all we know that the particle, suppose if you have a solution in which you have put suppose solution of a sand and something else in a water, you allow them to separate for a few hours to a few minutes, you will find that the layer of sand is deposited into the bottom of a container. That is a beaker or whatever. So this means that it is under the gravitational force field, it is being separated. But for in a small particle like a cells, like a cellular organelles, like a DNA, like RNA, like protein on which we are working, it is not so easily separated on the basis of the gravitational force and if it is separated we are not able to uh, able to see it and therefore we use the centrifuge machine so what does the uh, centrifuge machine do is it applies an external force under which the particle is being separated if i could be able to show you the machine internal part or external part of the machine as an instrumentation part all we know that there is a rotor rotor is having the place where you can put centrifuge tube this rotor is connected with the motor and which has been operated on the basis of the different parameters you might be having more somebody might be having a key and uh, time can be set adjusted uh, force can be adjusted and then you can run your program the certain machine allow you to save the programs like uh, if uh, two hours program, 30 minutes program, two minutes program at uh, some uh, 16,000 RPM or 2,000 RPM or 1,000 RPM. So depending upon, so you can vary the time, you can vary the RPM, but at a time you have to fix the both. Hello? Yes. So Vaisnavi, please mute your mic. So what is the basis? Why do we call them centrifuge machine or centrifugation? Why don't we call something others? So there is a logic behind each of the centrifuge. Not only that, if you will ask yourself that why your name is X, why your name is Y, you can ask your mother, you can ask your father, you can ask your grandfather. There must be some logic behind keeping your name that why your name is X, Y, Z. So the same logic works here for the analytical instrumentation soil as well. Like in centrifuge, it works on the principle of centrifugal force. And I think we have left 
this word long back maybe in plus 2 we might have studied in physics yes please raju uh, good evening sir yeah good evening so some question is that yeah uh, RNA and DNA molecule is separated by uh, separated through a uh, centrifugation. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is exist uh, separate in uh, in own structure. Uh, the structure of DNA or RNA is not uh, interrupt. Why, sir? We'll come to know the, uh, uh, when we will go for a, a density gradient. No. Yes, sir. Yeah, there or else. Just I'll uh, answer first. Okay, sir. You might be knowing two things. One is called as active form of anything, either DNA, RNA, or protein, and another is called as deformed. So, if you might have studied electrophoresis, there is called as 2D gel, and before 2D, it is called as SDS, a native page. So, once you use SDS or native, what you do is in a SDS page, you are disorganizing the protein you are not using them as it is in case of centrifugation no chemicals are used which can disturb their polarity which can disturb their active native structures because here we are using just like koi saman upar se girta hai niche jaise newton ne kaha ki gravitational force field to saman ki sthiti चेंज होती है पर उसकी स्ट्रक्चर चेंज नहीं होती क्योंकि उस पर जो फोर्स लग रहा है उस पर हर एक मॉलिक्यूल पे इक्वल एंड सेम फोर्स लग रहा है ऐसा नहीं कि यदि कोई मॉलिक्यूल प्रोटीन या डीएनए के आरएनए के आप बात करते हैं तो अलग अलग मॉलिक्यूल पे अलग अलग फोर्स लग रहा है यदि लगेगा तो डेफिनेटली उसका स्ट्रक्चर जो है डिफॉर्म होगा लेकिन चूंकि उसके हर एक मॉलिक्यूल पे एक ही जैसा फोर्स लगता है इसलिए उसका कोई भी स्ट्रक्चर डिफॉर्म नहीं होता और फोर्स भी कैसा कि जैसे आप कहें कि किसी आदमी को आप किसी दबाव में दबाएंगे या बॉल को बहुत दोनों उंगली से दबाएंगे तो दोनों तरफ एक तरफ आप रोक रहे हो और दूसरी तरफ से फोर्स दे रहे हो तो दोनों तरफ से फोर्स लग रहा है लेकिन इस मॉलिक्यूल को जब आप किसी सेंटिफिकेशन फील्ड में डालते हैं तो ऐसा नहीं कि एक तरफ आप रेस्ट्रिक्ट कर रहे हो और एक तरफ फोर्स लगा रहे हो इसलिए इसके स्ट्रक्चर में इसकी स्टेबिलिटी में कोई चेंजेस नहीं आते क्लियर सेपरेट करते हैं तो कभी आपने डीएनए सेपरेट किया है आर एन ए को किया है प्रोटीन को किया होगा तो किसी ने किसी केमिकल या किसी ने किसी इसमें किया और यदि खास करके डेंसिटी ग्रेडियंट आप यूज करेंगे डीएनए को सेपरेट करने के लिए तो आपने पढ़ा होगा कभी और इसीलिए आपको याद होगा यदि आप कभी भी प्रैक्टल करे होंगे कि यदि आपको बैक्टीरिया का आइसोलेशन करना है और उसको रिवाइव करके रखना है तो आप सेलाइन वाटर में रिवाइव कीजिए क्यों सेलाइन वाटर क्योंकि वह उसको ऑस्मोटिक प्रोटेक्टेंट प्रोटेक्टेंट के रूप में काम आएगा और जब ऑस्मोटिक प्रोटेक्टेंट देंगे तो सेल जो है वह कभी भी रपचर नहीं होगा डिशिल वाटर में इसलिए रोक मना किया जाता है अब करते हैं सेल ग्रो करती है लेकिन फिर भी ये कहा जाता है कि यदि आप सेलाइन वाटर यूज करें तो ऑस्मोटिक प्रोटेक्टेंट के रूप इंटरमीडिएट ऑफ साइंस ओनली आर टू फोर्सेस वेन एनी पार्टिकल ट्राई टू मूव इन Not linear path, circular path. There is a force acting onto a particle from the center towards periphery is called as centripetal force. And to balance this force, we move ourselves towards center, which is called as centrifugal force. So the force which is exerting from the center to of outward and another is called as outward to center. so since in case of this centrifugation technique we are using rotor and we are using force and this force is acting outwards from the center so is called as 
centrifugal force. So centripetal force, I'm correcting it once again, is the centripetal force is force which is acting Hello. Hello. Sir, you have an institute of internet. What is it? 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 What is to fail when it is needed the most. जब आपको मोबाइल की बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी होगी तो या तो टावर नहीं लगेगा, नेटवर्क नहीं लगेगा या बैटरी डाउन होगा। And therefore, it is called as whenever Alvia might have studied in a plus two itself, that whenever a particle is moving onto a linear path, it is called as linear velocity. And the velocity which is making them rotating into a circular path. It is called as angular velocity. So the angular velocity is omega, and the distance of the particle from the rotor. If I say the distance, there are two types of. Once we are saying r, this is usually takes us to the diameter and the rotor or whatever means radius of the something. So it is not the radius of the rotor, rather it is the distance of the particle to the cent from the center to the distance. So, if the particle is here, the r is small. If the particle is here, r is big. What we could do for it, the, the scientist has done that. We will discuss later. So, the r is the distance of the particle from the center of the axis of the rotor. So, it's called as r, a small r. So, it's called as r. So, f equals omega square r because all we know that the force equals uh, omega square r. Now this is angular force. So now this, when we say this r, it is a distance of it, and the g, which is depend upon the mass of the particle. Because if the particle size is more, if mass is greater, the density. What will be the impact on the density? So there is a correlation between the density, mass, and the volume. All we know. So we know that the density of a particle is equal to mass by volume and hence mass equals volume into density now from in mensuration in 9th 8th standard only we might have studied the spherical particle cow mass so volume of an spherical particle is 4 by 3 pi r q and hence mass will be volume into density so its volume is 4 by 3 pi r q into rho rho is the density so mass of an spherical particle could be written as 4 by 3 pi r q rho why we calculating this we will come to know at the end so all we know f equals ma in general force equals mass into acceleration and acceleration is nothing but omega square r that is the uh, velocity square into r so F equals M A, yani M G. So M is mass, M is, that is 4 by 3 pi R Q rho, and G means omega square R. So omega square R. Now here P is written. Why we have read, uh, Mr. P is used is because this R is, these two R is different from each other. This R is the 4 by 3 pi R Q in which r is the radius of a spherical particle and this r is the distance between the particle and the rotor axis center of rotor axis and hence this rp is been denoted the denoted as the radius of a particle and this is the density of the particle now so it is called as the force actual force which will govern by your centrifuge machine to move or make 
the move to the particle to the bottom is 4 by 3 pi r p q rho p omega square r but the story doesn't stop here because whenever you might have felt that jab bhi aap bike se ya gari se ya kisi maximum yani higher speed mein maybe uh, more than 40 km per hour or so if you try to travel by bike you will feel an pressure of an air so if suppose the environment is calm and you are moving or traveling through a bike you will feel that now mausam acha hai hawa aa rahi hai something like that so this hawa why this hawa is coming because of the thrust force exerted by those wind and these thrust for air forces exactly you might have studied about the newton's law third law i say so whenever the particle will try to move in any medium it will experience a thrust force from the medium itself whether it is air whether it is water whether it is any chemical so particularly in case of the centrifugation we never ever use air we use any kind of liquid medium and the particle which could be soluble into that medium cannot we can never be separated so the it must not be soluble in that of a medium then only it can be separated by the centrifugation so what will happen so therefore therefore the you might have seen or experienced it that suppose if you have eyes what you do is you take a ball fill a water put a kanchi inside and then put into a ice making machine or you say uh, like a uh, deep freezer or like that. once it is frozen into a ice remove them and then cut them into two pieces so that you can get access your kanji you will find that the spaces of the round kanji is impregnated onto that of the ice one so it is exactly the similar space as the ball had this means that the ball will occupy this space into the medium so medium will have the same space so it is therefore the f is for particle and f0 is for medium so the medium will have the same volume but has different in density because all we know that whatever the cells whatever the matters we talk about it will have a different density than that of the, that of the medium density and if it will be similar what will happen we will explain it later so what we have done is so the volume of the displaced medium by the particle will be same as the mass of the particle or the uh, density but uh, sorry uh, uh, what we say uh, mass but the density will be different so we, we can write rho m and omega square r now what will be the net resultant force by which the particle try to move downwardly so what we do is the force of the molecule minus force of the upward thrust force which is say the medium so f minus f0 so if you make the subtract if you subtract the f0 from f what we find here is almost all values are same parameter are same other than rho p and rho m so what we can do is we can take a common common all we know that the simple uh, mathematics mein. so we take common 4 by 3 pi r p q up omega square baad mein bhi leg sakte hain aur pa pehle bhi likh dein nothing to worry and what is left in between is rho p minus rho m this means the medium of the particle minus medium of the uh, sorry density of the particle and density of the medium now what i have to told you that suppose if this is the total force by which the particle will try to move inside now think of that if any molecule will try to move in any medium medium itself will cause a frictional means generate a frictional force and that frictional force will not allow the molecule to move into the medium and that is how we say sometimes that 
if a ball if you uh, uh, toss a, a coin if you toss it at the up what will be the velocity by which it will fall onto the earth and if you toss the same coins in a vacuum what will be the velocity since the toys means uh, the coins which is tossed into the medium so it depends upon the medium in which it is been tossed so because here is the air so air will generate a frictional force if you toss into a vacuum vacuum doesn't have any particle it so it won't generate any frictional force there itself and therefore it will move till the end of the you know we can say inverse like that so there is a you might have studied stokes formula stokes law and which says that the force by which the particle will try to move into a medium that will be a uh, coefficient of viscosity that is called as uh, eta that is called as uh, in a medium and together this f the force by which the particle will move will be equal to 6 pi eta r p v so the velocity and therefore this frictional force will applied onto the same particle which is being separated in any of the medium and therefore what we can do since these two forces are opposite to each other and therefore they will be equate so therefore f equals f q so what will happen f we know 4 by 3 pi r p q rho p minus rho m omega square r minus 6 sorry equals 6 pi eta r p v now simplify the equations if you simplify the equations we will get miss this uh, 4 by 3 ko 3 niche a jayega so 2 2 ja 4 2 3 ja 6 4 by 3 pi r p q rho p minus rho m omega square r by 6 pi eta r p v this r p can cancel one of this r p so r p square will be left this pi pi will be get will get cancelled and then eta will be remain so what remain in the equation is v equals 4 by 3 pi r p uh, um, square sorry uh, uh, pi r p q omega square r 6 pi eta r p humne uh, fir se likha hai equals 2 by 9 3 into 3 ho jaye kyunki 2 2 ja 4 2 3 ja 6 r p square rho p minus rho m omega square r by eta and we can write 2 by 9 r p square rho p minus rho m omega square r by eta or else you can write 2 r p square rho p minus rho m omega square r by 9 eta we can shuffle this omega square here also so uh, you can we can write anyway we wish now now whenever any particle try to move in any medium there is a certain time duration and there will be certain speed so that is called as change in time at what respect so dr the distance because how, uh, what i told you in the beginning that the molecule which is at the top will have less r molecule which is the mid will have more r and the molecule which is at the bottom will have maximum r so how to equate how to say that miss miss uh, the molecule which is at the top will have to travel more so this means that they need more force to reach to the bottom so then how to how do we say that all molecule will settle at the same time and therefore we say v equals dr by dt and the same equation we will put like now what conclusion we can draw from it is the v is directly proportional to r p square this means that if the particle size is more you need more velocity this means that you need to give more forces if the particle is lesser you will have to apply uh, more uh, less forces because it's you know uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, irreversible irreversible thing because velocity so if rp is more velocity is more this means that you need to give less force to get it settled into the bottom and if rp is less the velocity will be less and therefore you have to give more forces to settle into the medium the same thing if r so usually we cannot increase or decrease this r and omega we can increase or decrease this eta this is the medium density 
So density of the medium, so if you use water, the density will be different. If you use certain buffers, the density will be different. If you use certain other solvent, the density will be different. And therefore, the rate of sediment and sedimentation will be directly, indirectly proportional to the viscosity of the medium. So as the viscosity of the medium is more, the force you have to apply more because V will be less. And if the density is less, V will be more. So you need to apply less forces. So this equation tells us exactly that suppose in a practical book, in any book, in any protocol, if it is asked 10,000 RPM, 8 minutes, suppose we don't have that kind of machine which will allow us to rotate at 10,000 RPM, maybe 8,000, maybe 6,000, what to do? Maybe stop working? So what exactly we need to do there is, if we are decreasing the force, how much time we have to increase so that the particle may exactly separate. But the same condition or rule is not been enforced for all the particle. Because if I say RNA, if I say DNA, if we say protein, it's okay, sir, no matter what. It's written 10,000, we do it 2,000, it won't happen. Because the variations, so you have to keep little variation, not much of the variation. Now, the most important, rho P minus rho M. If the particle density becomes equal to the density of the medium, means whenever the density of the medium is equal to the density of the particle, the particle that the rho p minus rho m will become zero. One minus one, two minus two, three minus three become zero. So if it becomes zero, what will happen? The total term will be zero because it will multiply and it will become zero. If you divide them by nine eta, it will be infinity. This means that if the density of the particle is equal to the density of the medium, the particle will no longer accelerate into the medium. And therefore, always what we need to do is we need to keep the density of the particle much more than that of the density of the medium. At least some amount of differences must be there, otherwise, particle will no longer accelerate into the medium. And therefore, the selection of the medium for the separation of the molecule is most important, particularly in density gradient centrifugation, not for the sim simple and normal one. Now, in publications, in international platforms, we usually do not use RPM. We use a common term, which is called as RCS, that is called as relative centrifugal field, whose unit is G. And RPM means revolution per minute. So RPM of a machine with two, three, four different rotors may differ from each other with the corresponding G length. And if a he instrument banane wali company, a he machine ka do teen char rotor alag banaye gi, there must be difference in the RPM versus RCF. But if you convert them RPM to RCF, it won't be different. It will be a same. And therefore, in all publication, we see G value, 13, 200, 2000 X. So with there, it is really right X, RCF or G value, something like that. And therefore, at a local, on a lab scale, what we do is we are converting the G, that is RCF, into RPM, and then we work into the lab. And if, whenever we have to publish any of the data, we publish them in terms of RCF, that is in G. So there is an equation that is, is a fixed RCF, RPM say RCF convert karna hai, then we can have 1.118 R n by 1000 square, where n is the RPM. So you put RPM, R is your rotor diameter, useful in general rotor diameter is 95 mm normal value unless it is given and if the rotor value is given for like 85 mm 105 mm 80 mm then the scenario will differ so r will differ accordingly and thus you will get the rca value from rpm and from rpm to rcf we can get that is 945.7 root rca by r can be used 
for converting from RPM to RCF. So very well, it can be converted from RPM to RCF. Now sedimentation coefficient, that is called as this uh, sedimentation coefficient uh, V is proportional to omega square r. What is V? We have seen the F is proportional to omega square r. And as we increase the force, velocity will be increasing. And therefore, V can be, F can be replaced by V. So V is equal to proportional to omega square r. Once you remove this proportionality, there will be a constant that is called as sedimentation constant and is called as S equals, that is S, so it's called as here it is a bit, uh, I have uh, uh, made some mistake. V is equal to S omega square. So this S is called as sedimentation coefficient. And this sedimentation coefficient, if you put all these things term here, is uh, this side, so S equals V by omega square R. And whenever we work for any kind of instrumentations, any kind of uh, protocol, there is a standard set for the, at what temperature we need to work, at what pressure we need to work. So for a standard temperature, it is at which the S is equal to V by omega square R, it is considered the viscosity of water at 20 degrees C, so it's called as S20W. So it's called as the standard water temperature. So viscosity of water at uh, of, uh, 20 degrees C will be standard for this IS. And all we know that this S was devised, was found out by a scientist called T. Swedberg. Sometimes it is written T S V E D, sometimes W B likha jata hai. So it is equal to 1 S is equal to 10 power minus 13 seconds. Usually, this nucleic acid has a value of 3 to 100 S. Viruses has 30 to 1000 S. Membrane has 100 to 10 power 5 means uh, uh, 1 lakh second. Now, before we go or move forward, I have just to add one more thing. This equation is for spherical particle. What about the non-spherical one? Because as I told you that most of our Stellar organelles are non-spherical. Like if you take about example of, uh, uh, you know, inoplasmic reticulum, if you take an example of ribosome, whatever the Golgi body, if you take an example of any uh, mitochondria, anything like DNA, RNA protein, then what happens is this F by F zero. What this uh, what we do is we write here F by F zero way. So multiply with nine eta by F by F zero. And F by F0 for most of the protein comes at 1 to 1.4, most of irregular one. And for a spherical particle, since F by F0 value becomes 1, and therefore it is not written here significantly, so it is a simple one. And therefore, if the particle has more irregular, F by F0 value will be more towards factor 1. And therefore, the rate of sedimentation or non spherical particle can be written as V equals dr by dt 2 rp square rho p minus rho m omega square r by 9 eta into f by f0, where f by f0 is a factor of or of a uh, molecule that is the shape of it. So, now centrifugation techniques. There are two set types of centrifugation techniques one is called as preparative and another is called as analytical. We will go preparative later. First, we see the analytical. And before we go an analytical, we say the centrifugation classification of major four. There are major, sorry, uh, five types of centrifugation: a small bench, large capacity refrigerated centrifuge, high capacity or high speed refrigerated centrifuge, continuous flow centrifuge, ultra centrifuge, in which it is coming preparative and analytical. Usually, in most of the books. Uh, uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, please correct uh, four and five like that. Preparative and analytical is given. This analytical system works on two, two principles. One is called as absorption system, and another is called as accelerant system. So, what for this analytical centrifuge is? Analytical centrifuge is for to get an idea about exact rate of sedimentation of a particle 
with respect to time. So, usually analytical centrifuge is not used at all in any of the normal lab unless we need to find the separation parameter of a particle at a particular RPM for a particular time period. So, in a protocol, when it is written 10,000 RPM for five minutes, this means that it has been optimized at analytical system and then it is written that for best answer for best separation we can have we can rotate we can use centrifuge that is this much rpm for this much minute and how it is calculated this rotor has a certain certain uh, means all along the all sides this is uh, uh, transparent side so and from one side there is a light source Slit collimator to form a monochromatic light. Then it is being uh, cool chamber and vacuum chamber is created into a, a rotor chamber. And and jab bhi ultra centrifuge ki baat karte hain, so without vacuum it cannot be operated because if you operate due to the frictional force, it will generate a heat and that heat will cause damage to the rotor, will cause damage or distortion to your materials. And therefore, this uh, is been vacuum. And another thing is that in your our normal centrifugation uh, machine in our lab like large capacity or high speed uh, centrifuge or normal tabletop centrifuge also has a refrigeration system and this refrigeration system does not only protect our molecule like protein from dissociation rather it does not uh, means it uh, minimizes the heat is which is dissipated due to the frictional force between air in the chamber of the rotor and the rotor although there is no vacuum but it has been cooled down so it's called as the refrigeration is there so then what happens suppose if the machine is moving at a particular initial time this light source will fall and it will give a density something like that a spectrophotometer and therefore as the particle molecule will move what will happen the movement will be recorded on the basis of the light source is been falling onto the material which is being, is being moved in a rotor and therefore in a real time suppose a particle at this moment it was here so peak is here after certain maybe two seconds three seconds or ten sec seconds maybe one minute particle has now moved so has attained this peak has attained certain distance at an on axis after certain moment of time the particle has moved on to this after a certain moment of time particle has moved here after a certain moment of time now peak has reached to this one so the time is calculated at this speed the particle once it start moving from this one it has reached to this on uh, at this particular uh, time in uh, it's like five minutes or ten minutes. and therefore the rate is calculated that is rate of sedimentation is calculated in terms of the rpm and the time so rpm versus time and therefore analytical techniques or analytical centrifugation is used to calculate the exact rpm and exact for uh, rpm at for a particular period of time to sediment a particle under centrifugation so in a preparative one what is there for each particle to be separated what we need to do is we need to miss uh, scientists needs to do uh, uh, the analytical one and then they make a protocol suppose you need suppose microjoule fraction what we need to do is suppose this uh, liver was homogenated in 10% 20.25 20 molar sol sucrose solutions and then was centrifuged at 1000 g for 10 minutes you will get pellets and the supernatant pellet will have the uh, cells so what we do is we don't what we need is the microjoule fraction so mostly we it will be presented to the supernatant what we need is to do is we need to to take supernatant now what you do is wash the pellet with the same sucrose solution and again send diffuse again collect the fractions so supernatant you take and the pellet will have a nuclear fraction so supernatant can be collected now pull the to both supernatant again increase the rpm so 3000 300 rpm for 10 minutes again you will get pellet supernatant take supernatant pellet can be washed for better or more uh, amount of uh, 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 microjoule fractions to be collected and therefore it is a vast uh, centrifuge at the same rpm and then 
the supernatant was collected, pulled together, again the RPM was increased, like 16,300 RG. So it is G, so it's RCF. Then again you will get supernatant and pallet, then supernatant, then pallet will be again re centrifuge and in the same medium, that is the sucrose one, you will get pallet, so pallet will be lysosomal fractions and the supernatant can collect it. This supernatant can again be centrifuge at 1 lakh Z for 30 minutes to get a microdimal fractions and the another so you will get the microdimal and therefore this is called as so whatever in a lab even if you use to extract the dna it is called as prepare whatever the centrifuge we are we are using like what we do is treat the cells so that the cell will lie so all the cell fractions get uh, miss cell uh, organelles and everything comes out of the cell so we centrifuge to remove the cell then we add phenol chloroform isomyl alcohol so that the protein or uh, polysaccharides, whatever is present, may be maximally be removed. Thereafter, we increase the RPM, and then by that time, we are precipitating our DNA by ethanol or uh, isopropyl alcohol, and then we are increasing the RPM, and then we get the pallet, we remove the supernatant, which cause or uh, which has certain enzymes, which has certain other uh, impurities, and we take the DNA. And this DNA, and therefore, that is called a preparative one. Now, the motor rotors of the centrifuge is either made of a brass, steel, perplex, aluminium, titanium. So many materials can be used, but if you see the steel, steel can be could be heavier one. So if the motor itself is more heavier, it will give you a less RPM in the machine because motor will have to work more, will have to exert more force to rotate the heavier rotor. So as you might have replacing your rotor from one means less to the heavier one, you will experience the less RPM. Yes, please. Continue, Carly. You can reply after completion. Kitta minute or hai? Maybe 15 minutes. Okay, okay. After 15 minutes, you can reply. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, नॉर्मल हम मीडियम में ले लेते हैं क्योंकि जो मॉलिक्यूल आप लेते हैं वो किस मीडियम में स्टेबल होता है दैट मीडियम यू हैव टू सेलेक्ट सो द मीडियम हैज अ रोल टू गिव एन स्टेबिलिटी एंड इट आई थिंक दिस इज वन ऑफ द आंसर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन आप आई थिंक राजू क्वेश्चंस नाउ देयर आर टाइप्स ऑफ रोटर व्हिच इज यूज्ड लाइक स्विंगिंग बकेट रोटर या इसको स्विंगिंग आउट रोटर भी कहते हैं फिक्स एंगल रोटर वर्टिकल रोटर जोनल रोटर एंड इलुट्रेटर रोटर ये पांच तरह के रोटर यूज किए जाते हैं देन लाइक पाथ लेंथ तो इट इज कॉलेज पाथ लेंथ दिस फ्रॉम द मींस द मैक्सिमम लेंथ बाय द मॉलिक्यूल टू बी कवर्ड टू रीच द बॉटम इज कॉलेज पाथ सो पाथ लेंथ आल्सो कम्स इन अ सेंट्रीफ्यूज मशीन सो व्हाट हैपेंस आई आई टोल यू आर मिनिमम आर मैक्सिमम सो व्हाट साइंटिस्ट डज इट दे मेड एवरेज आर मिनिमम प्लस आर एवरेज medium plus r maximum divided by 3 made r average so that is called as r average that is, that is used in the centrifugation uh, principle so in swinging out rotor the rotor is initially in hanging position and, and once it attains uh, uh, rpm it goes to the horizontal one so it's called as from vertical to horizontal so since it's a swing out so it is called a swing out rotor or swinging bucket rotor in swing out rotor particularly wall effect is been seen in fixed angle rotor usually this angle is in between 14 to 40 degree and most of the lab uses this rotor only because most of the molecule is getting deposited at this side of the bottom of the rotor and the path length is from this to this so path length of the fixed angle rotor is lesser than that of the swinging out rotor and sabse jyada kam hota vertical tube rotor 
whose rotor is situated at 90 degree most often we are using or most of us might not have seen this rotor that is used that we call as vertical tube rotor and whose path length is very less because this to this only now so in a comparison we can have like that so now it's called as a zonal rotor in a zonal rotor the rotor this is a, a huge rotor and usually used in the industrial scale where it is continuous mode and it can be operated in a, a batch mode as well so zonal rotor may there are four zones so suppose if this is a rotor it will be a round one so divide them into four zone in each zone you can see here there will be a outlet there will be here is the outlet or inlet so what we what is done when the sample is loaded it is loaded from this way so another chamber this chamber another chamber same one this two chamber and same way and once the centrifuge is done the heavier particle will be deposited at the peripheral side and lighter particle will be deposited into the central axis then again the particle is been removed by putting either the medium or buffer or the sample so that it will push out and slowly one by one the fractions can be collected in a zonal rotor so it's called a zone then it's called a electrolyte rotor in electrolyte rotor it is a continuous mode and continuous mode may khas karke jahan pe industry mein large scale mein fermenter chalate hain their uh, they use uh, maybe thousands of liter or 500 liter if you open and batch mode mein centrifuge karenge then you will uh, you know uh, have a more problem with the contamination and therefore there this kind of rotor either batch rotor uh, or electrolyte rotor is been used so their typical chamber is looking like this so from inlet it comes to here it comes here and then when it is in under the centrifugations and the heavier particle will be settling here and lighter will be here so when again inlet will be uh, used for pushing the separated particle so the first the smaller particle will be separated so here then medium then uh, larger so fractions can be collected according is collected according something like that so it is moved like this so then it's called uh, there are two types of uh, uh, ultra centrifuge one is called a uh, differential and one is called a uh, density gradient and uh, this density gradient has again two types one is called uh, isopitnic and one is called uh, rate zoner in a differential centrifugations this method is based upon differences in the sedimentation rate of the particle so what is done is in case of this you have the mixture so what you do is first you separate give a particular rpm you will get a particular fraction so remove this fraction first so first you remove an another new tube you will have this fraction again you rotate and at a higher rpm you will get another fraction again you rotate the higher rpm so in a difference of density difference of their force you will separate the particle so it's called as a differential in a density gradient it's a two type one is called as a rate zonal another is called as a isopitnic in a rate zonal as the name suggests rate zonal rate means time or in terms of daily life it is money so here it's not money because for sanctification it's not the money it's a time so rate means time so if you give more time you will separate more uh, uh, smaller particle something like that of differential one but a diff little bit difference is like as i told you earlier that like that of a system chloride density so what we do is we use a different particular density medium like cesium chloride or percol or ficol or nicodens simple one in isopicnic what happens we are using a gradient of the same density chemicals like either cesium chloride or nicodens yes kaka 10 minute ke baad nikal ja so what we do is here suppose if you see a do teen char five layer what we do is either you can make sucrose uh, medium of sucrose you can make glycerol you can use percol because there are many medium which can be used to make give the density 
so suppose if you, I use sucrose, what I do is I will take 100%. So I will put 100% at the bottom, then we will put 80%, then we will put 60%, then we will put 40%, then we will put 20%, then there is no 0%. So thereafter, what we will do is we will put the mixture over here. So it will be lying onto the surface meniscus of the tube. Once you use centrifugation, what will happen? The molecule will move according to the density. So even this density gravity centrifugation has a feature that even if you rotate for say for five minutes and your particle has been separated into a distinct density wala medium if you remember rho p minus rho m so the particle gets deposited into the medium where the density of the particle is equivalent to the density of the medium and therefore we have to see that what is the density of the particle and what could be the density of the medium to be used to separate those of the particle and accordingly the density is to be fixed it's not 20 always 20 40 60 percent it will be on the basis of the density of the particle and even if you rotate for two days the particle won't move longer into the medium it will be in the layer itself because it has attained the density of the medium so it won't move longer so this is called as density gradient centrifugation there are another which is called a density barrier in which we are using silicon oil as a density barrier and the dinolyl halide is used to correct the density of that so there are many more which can which are temperature sensitive called a density barrier centrifugation as it is uh, allowed to rotate and uh, usually it is not used for a uh, um, usual uh, kind of thing blood cells can be separated usually density barrier and so on because all we know that blood cells in particularly uh, uh, WBC, we have lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils that can be separated on the basis of the uh, density barrier centrifugation. That is all for the uh, centrifugation. One more thing I would like to add here, when we are going to use centrifuge machine, we need to make sure that it must be counterbalanced. Counterbalance means when whatever the sample we are using suppose if it is in odd number so it uh, we have to make them even number or even if it is odd number we have to place in a uh, rotor in such a way that the rotor must be balanced otherwise what will happen it will damage our rotor rotor and uh, the lid must be closed and the sop must be followed for the machine any machine not only sanitation that's all for today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I have completely watched, uh, except for five minutes. So you have done very wonderful job. Means you have delivered it this complete uh, complex topic uh, sim in simple way, as as I have understood. I don't know about other participants. Participants now. Neelam, you have question, you have raised by mistake your hand or you really wish to ask question? Yes, Hanuman, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. What are you, sir? Uh, I have some uh, two questions regarding uh, this. Uh, it is maybe general. Suppose uh, if you are started that. Uh, suppose when we start that to any centrifugation for 10,000 or 5,000 RPM and uh, if uh, it is the five minutes, okay, yes, five sir. minutes. So